Oh, sorry. I'm recording. I oh. forgot to record. Continue. No, that's sorry okay. To you. Listen um, to the on listening to your podcast and hearing things, other people's experiences, I'm thinking, oh, so really mine are probably very low on the scale and really not all that uncommon. Right. We just don't talk about it. Right. right. We, yeah, just pretend that it doesn't happen or whatever, whether right. it's in a dream or real life or yeah. Anyway, so that's right. my, and I, I, I tend to react with a lot of fear and worry. And so mm -hmm. those are my things that I'm trying to overcome right now. Mm -hmm. And those have been my blocks. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to let all that go. So that's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But we're yeah. all a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. But I find listening to your podcast very encouraging, very yeah, uplifting. Good. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. glad. And it gives me some direction, to be quite honest. Yeah. Thank you. I love yeah. that. Um, Ashley's here. Kate's here from Australia. Ooh. Um, hello. I... Um, I was just talking to Leslie. She's just found the podcast a couple months ago and started going down the rabbit hole. So I was trying to get to know her. Um, Ashley met, I met Ashley. Um, she lives in Vermont, Ver Delaware. Delaware. Oh. Why was I <laughs> Delaware? Delaware. <laughs> she lives in Delaware. I met her and her daughter, Lily, and we oh, did a vision you. board together and that was fun. And oh. um, so that was um, amazing. And you wanted um, me to tell you hi, by the way, when I told her that yeah. I was coming on here. Yeah. Oh, cute. <laughs> that was so fun. Um, how are you? What's new with you? Good. I mean, what's new with me? Um, I heard Leslie mentioned automatic writing and since we met, I have started trying to do that. Like I've been, except for one day this past weekend, cause my daughter woke up sick, like unexpectedly. I've done it every day for almost three weeks, like 21 oh, days, which is probably the longest I've ever done anything like consistently. <laughs> um, so I'm really proud of myself with that. I'm still kind of getting in my way a little bit. Like I wanted to be, you know, an automatic writing, you know, powerhouse already. So I'm trying to be patient and like know that obviously it's, it will come with time, but that's something that's new with me that I've started the last couple of weeks, which I'm, you know, into and keep chugging yeah. along and you just have to keep doing it and not question yourself because I do it. I sit here. I mean, if you saw my notebook, <laughs> you'd be like, Oh, okay. Let's see. Like, it's like nonstop. Like, oh, wow. It's nonstop. I write wow. nonstop. Um, and it's just that flow, right? The, I'm not questioning it. And, and sometimes I go, and I'll know if, if it's a word, cause I, most of you know, my dad passed away. Um, gosh, page is going to be seven, 18. So 18 years ago. But, um, when I, when he comes in, he'll say, honey, and I'm sure Kate's going to talk about this too tonight, but maybe, um, oh. but I'll know the, the, his vocabulary comes through and I, and I know like, gosh, I would never say honey or oh. you got this girl. Something else came through and I was like, you got this girl. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't use those, but it's just so it's like my, you just, you, it's just like you've been doing Ashley. Like it's just a continue every day, just sitting here writing and it's like a comfort, you know, it's like a, you know, that you're so you're, there's more than just you, you know, there's more and you, I connect to my higher self so much and talk through that. And I, then I lay here on the couch and do my meditation. And I've been doing lately the, um, is it nine, six, the megahertz that connects you to your spirit guides. Nine, six, three. Nine, six, three. Thank you, Mish. Um, I've been doing that, which is, I was telling the girls this weekend, cause oh. I was, we were in LA at a hotel and I said, Oh, I'm kind of craving that Med You kind of get to that. I don't want to say addicted, but it's like this. Oh, I just get this. Like, um, you get in that place where you're like, Oh, I love that. And then I come back and I'm, you know, whatever came to me, I kind of try to write. And then I like this morning I had a dream and I it was about Kate and I have to right away, you know, text her or if it's something, you know, it's just like recognizing your dreams, putting that together, automatic writing, all the things that being so open to the signs that are everywhere that we see and, 
that sometimes, you know, if you're not in that present moment that you're, you know, not seeing it cause they're always there. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I just automatic writing is so fun and so, um, powerful. Kate, do you automatic write? Hi, which me? You. Yeah. So, oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like, um, I started doing that, um, when I was writing, cause I'm an author, I've written two children's books. And that is basically how I wrote. I it's almost channeled like the whole book was just I wrote and it ended up writing like this five thousand page like manuscript with every sentence was rhyming and which I've later learned that that's like angelic as well when there's like a lot of rhyming sort of throughout it. Um, and then I had to edit it and re, you know write it so that um, it could be picked up and and read as a you know like a mainstream kind of um, product. But um, the cool thing that I wanted to share with you, Ashley, and everyone is, um, yeah, definitely like, yeah, I love automatic writing. Got to open up that flow. And for me, it's meditating. And like I do that outside um, a lot. We've moved to the country. And the property that we're on, there's these beautiful, big, um, huge trees. And since we've moved here, I just realised, well, I got drawn to it to go and lean on the trunk of a tree and lean back with my head connected. For some reason, I can't wear shoes and I can't wear a hat. And that is just like, just completely just, it's like connect, picking up a phone. It was very surprising. So the tree introduced itself and said his name was Banjuan, but I can call him Banjo. Um, And now I just have to like, I don't even have to do kind of my meditation all the steps beforehand like that I would normally do. I can just lean on that at any time and um, connect straight in. And it feels like this big channel of light just coming straight down the tree with just a constant stream of information. And then I, I've i brought in um, like my husband's father has passed away like last year. So I've t- spoken to him um, and generally I'm just talking to um, like Banjo, this um, higher, um, you know, consciousness, if you like, Um and I, I use it in a way to get a lot of my direction for my work and like the next steps to take, like it's very personal. I'll be like, what's next? And they'll sort of show me a full image of what I should be doing next with my work. Um, and anytime I have questions, I will ask the tree. Sean now is like, go ask the tree. It's his response to my husband, like any question oh, I have, cool. go ask the tree. And I'm like, I th- and then I'm like, oh, I should be doing it more. But I, I recently did a beautiful one where my children I held the hand. They wanted to know who their main guardian angel um, is. And I don't know. I don't know. But I leant on the tree, held my daughter's hand, and just saw this image of her. Like it was surrounded by all these like angels, like I want to say like 30, 40. This is team. And they had this energy of like, say, fairy pixie like energy. And just matched her personality so much and kind of explained so much of her mannerisms. And um, then when I, so I communicated that to her, that the angel stepped forward and told me her name. um, And I told my daughter that. And then my son, who's only six, I held his hand separately. And again, I'm like, I don't know what I can, what's going to come through. And this, it all was just blue. And this almost like warrior like angel step forward with a big sword, which is Archangel Michael, very strong kind of Archangel Michael vibes. But he said his name was Azil. And my daughter's was Chimpachi, which is very hard to, to, <laughs> to communicate. But just completely like I think what I'm learning is, you know, you take it from you first you're starting out with stuff that's very personal to you and and what is helping you in your day. Um, and then now I'm, I guess I'm working on is just really opening up to like, you know, to kind of expand myself and go a bit higher. Um, I don't know if that's going to end up being like messages that I want to communicate, you know, more broadly or just another, you know, children's book or, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely been, um, a fascinating experience and I'm kind of reaching out in my sort of friend circles and stuff to find out if there's anyone else who's like communicating through a tree. Um, Mm -hmm. and I've come across only one lady so far, but I've, I'm kind of like doing research, but so if anyone ever hears anyone like channeling through a tree, (laughs) please let me know. I did. Um, I did. Oh my God. Okay. That's why when you were saying that, so Aaron, Aaron's 
on here, but she, her, her things off. She, um, she, she connected me on Facebook with this light language. Um, so it was like, there's a cup, I'll send you some on Facebook, but this woman had a video and she was against the tree because when you're oh saying God. this, I, I'm picturing yes. her on the tree and she's channeling the tree through light yes. language though. Like she was channeling this, the voice, the yes. messages from the tree. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was just last week. I'll send you the, oh there's God. a couple Please of groups. Oh. Yeah. Cause like my husband's like, why do you need to know? Like you're doing it. I'm like, no, but it, I feel like it's just, it would be great to hear other people's, ex, you know, experiences. And I feel like in the future that will become very common. Like mm-hmm. we will eventually be communicating with animals, trees, like, so that I'd love to hear more of that. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't yeah. weird when you're saying that. Cause I was like, gosh, I just was so mesmerized by this woman sitting against, standing against this tree, wait, yes. waiting to like, and there it came. And, yep, that's exactly. So I leaned back and there's even at the base of this tree is this mossy pad where my feet go. It's like it's just custom huh. made. And I've met some of the, I've been introduced to some of the Aboriginal elders from in the area that we live in and um, that is not unknown to them. They, it was just as normal as pie. Oh, like it, wow. um, They're called grandfather trees and grandmother trees. So I'm... I like it. I'm learning a bit from them as well about different things. So it's just fascinating. Yeah, very. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. How are you, Mish? I'm good. I was just going to say, I was just telling my son when he got into the car earlier, he was like, yeah, you know, we kick some trees. And then I was like, what? Why are you <laughs> kicking the trees? They have feelings. And he was like looking at me and I'm like, no, they do. I said, you can't be kicking trees. They have energy. And he was just saying that they were kicking it to get the water off the leaves. But I'm like, no, you can't. Yeah. So when you were talking about the le- the, the tree skate, I was, the, le- uh, the trees, I was just like, you see, you see. Oh, funny. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like the, I feel like it's, you know how like we've got our soul in our body. So we yes. know that vessel and they have I can see that that's exactly the same way they you not using it but as an essence a soul a spirit is is living in the tree like the tree is still an organic you know yes entity or, or thing if you like but yeah it's it's like the soul is living in the tree I think all plants because I sing to my plants and then they do well oh yeah so I sure think even well. plants are I don't know I'm just and then I had a bunny die. One of my bunnies passed away. But normally I, I go crazy. But through all of this, it's more like, okay, she's still here with me. And she's still guiding, you know, because that's the first time I was able to feel. I used to bond with my bunnies and I'd go forehead to forehead. And you just go into this other world where there's no space, no time. And it's just vibration. And so that was my first foray into love, pure love. And so to have her pass away was a big thing. But yeah, it it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Right. Love that. Um, I want to um, maybe like five more minutes before Kate comes on. Um, yes. I, I wanted to um, ask anybody, because I have had a since we met last, um, I always love to hear feedback. Um, if you've listened to a podcast in the last couple of weeks, like Buddha Betty, mm-hmm. um, Ainsley, I forget who, um, it, but is there anything that you learned from it or anything that you were takeaways? Cause I know that when I put a podcast out, it's like, it's really, it means so much to me. And I'm like, I wonder if they got what I got, if it really meant, um, if there was any takeaways, anybody? I want to oh. ask, oh, sorry. go ahead. No, you go right ahead. Put a quick one out there. Do you think that there's like a walk that she was almost like a walk in? She got to that point where, like, a um, in her life of complete collapse, and a new spirit has come in. Or do you think that she was experienced? Like, what do you think happened there? Huh. That's a good. Um, that's a possibility. I see what you mean by that. I don't. I wish I asked her that question. <laughs> Um, what were you going to say, Leslie? What were you think? 
Well, I was just going to say, uh, if anyone can turn their life around, like Betty can, and like, wow, <laughs> right. that was an inspiring story. And I've listened to actually to a couple of her podcasts since, um, and she's also got some very interesting people on. And I really enjoyed Ainsley McLeod. I thought mm -hmm. he was excellent. Uh, Paul did you go Selleck. down your um, your yeah. uh, Ainsley Soul number? Did you go? Did you go that deep? I have no. I haven't done that mm -hmm. yet. I would like to get his book mm -hmm. and um, go to his website. I haven't done any of that yet, only because um, I feel like I've discovered so many new things now that I, right <laughs> that I yeah so I'm rereading actually one of Paul Selleck's books right now so I'm thinking okay that's where I'm going to focus on right now right just to sort of get back to I read it years Same. ago <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly like, yeah or scattered. otherwise I yeah and I've done that before and so I'm rereading um his book I am mm -hmm. and just and I've gotten a couple of his new books I've got them on the shelf but I just feel like I really need to sort of reset mm -hmm. and I'm thinking things that I read years ago I didn't fully digest right or I put them back on the shelf I wasn't ready myself to explore things mm -hmm. deeper and now I am yeah. You know, so, it's yeah. one thing that I late since Buddha Betty. Mm -hmm. So I've had course in miracles in my, on my bookshelf. Oh, and me too. Years, right. Yeah. And I, it's but like I'm going to get the easy version now. I have that too. And <laughs> okay. I've read that it's in here and I, <laughs> okay. but, um, you know, so now after, you know how she, it's a bibliomancy. That was mm -hmm. a, I never heard yeah, that I've word never heard until neither have I. he explained to me bibliomancy. And I'm like, Oh, I mm -hmm. do that all the time. But mm -hmm. I was looking at after she was so, she learned so much from Course in Miracles mm -hmm. and I, you know, had put it on the shelf and I look back at it, you know, kind of like bibliomancy. So yeah. I have it now at my coffee time in the morning okay. and I open it and it's kind yeah. of like my lesson. And I just use it as the thinking of Buddha Betty. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah. Funny yeah, that you say that. Cause I was going to do the exact same oh, thing. Good. Oh, funny. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. that course in miracles was just that was life changing for me. I, I read that in my twenties. Yes, and then me a too. Course, wow. in, course in love. Yes. Next mm. one. That that's amazing as well. A course mm. in love. It's a follow up one. Incredible, incredible. I feel like it's kind of like the early version of Paul Selig that just by the process of reading it, it must be doing something to you, like okay. attuning in some way. Oh, neat. Yeah. Anyone sure. else want to share before we bring Kate on? I, for those books, is it better to read it or to listen? Is it okay to listen? I would say the Course in Miracles. You want to buy the book because it's okay. it's like a buy. You, you wouldn't couldn't. Like it, it would take you like <laughs> ten million years to <laughs> listen to that. And I, and I have an audio book. Good to know. Thank you. Now listening to you guys, I'm like, okay, I want to buy it and have it to to read in person because. Yeah. Well, I absorbed, <laughs> yeah, yes, which is I probably could. Have. And if there's a workbook in it, I don't know. It's just an, it's yeah. kind of a neat little thing to put by your, I mean, coffee time is my, in the morning when I open that up. Mm -hmm. And I, re I remember thinking, um, I do that, but now I'm going to put Bibliomancy in the Course in Miracles yeah. because of Betty. <laughs> yeah. It's um, great. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's Betty nothing else. like a book in hand. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. So mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. There's definitely something about that for sure. Yeah. And I have Ainsley's books and I would say I would rather have his books than listen mm -hmm. to the, than listen to it on audible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And even Paul, I mean, I've, I do have Paul Selig's on my audible, but, um, if they're ones that you can just go to and open, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of a book. Yeah. Um, all right. Without further ado, if anyone wants to talk before we bring my amazing Kate on, and I'm going to introduce her. I know you all have seen her on here for the last, what have we done these three or four times? Um, she's the one that um, helped me get the retreat um, location and made it so beautiful and 
so special. And, um, she found me like all of you have, I mean, mostly, um, from the podcast and she lives in San Diego and I don't know what she's want to talk, what she's going to talk about today, but just so you know, it's kind of a big deal for her. Um, who was talking about being seen? Was it Leslie who about like, you know, coming out? Oh yeah. So oh, we were talking about people yeah. coming out and yeah, like mm-hmm. sharing your, your magic, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, this is probably one of her first, like more than one person, um, <laughs> share and, um, I love her and I'm just so grateful that she's come into my life. So you are going to enjoy Kate and take it away, my dear. Yeah. Thanks, Ashley. So, and thank you all too. Um, it's for me, like being a part of community like this, like Leslie said, it's not like I have too many people in my life that I can share kind of what's going on with me. It's kind of like I'm living in two worlds. I'm living Mm -hmm. this one and then I live in my, you know, my normal life with my family, my grandkids, my children, uh, not so much my husband because he, you know, he's pretty much on board, but kind of what I wanted to share with you and then just go into, you know, what I do um, trans channeling is that this year I'm going to be 62 years old. And this kind of hit me out of left field just a few years ago. So it wasn't anything. I always was a spiritual person, but not anybody who knew who anybody was whatsoever. Um, didn't know who the Paul Selleck were, doesn't, didn't know who Abraham Hicks was when I started doing this and I did it for somebody. She goes, you're, you're like Abraham Hicks. And I'm like, who's that? I didn't even know when I was doing it, who that was. So that's how like naive of a person I was coming into this, this whole world. So, um, and listening to you, Leslie, it was really kind of like the same thing again, mm-hmm. too. 14, I had thyroid cancer and I had an employee that did Reiki and um, through a series of events that just, uh, I'll keep it really short. He had asked me if he could do Reiki on me before my surgery. And my thyroid cancer was, you know, ear to ear and underneath my chest, right? So they were going to do thoracic surgery and um, neck surgery. And, you know, I was positive and I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to be fine, you know? And I said yes to him. And he explained to me after the fact that these three beans had come right away, did a healing on me. He asked me what I felt and I felt like some snapping on my neck. And he just said, you know, I didn't touch you, but you know, there are these, and he described them as extraterrestrial higher beings that could do things. And he told me that I was going to be fine. I went into surgery a couple of days later and, you know, both surgeons are there, the thoracic surgeon and everybody. And um, when they started doing the work, you know, they had all, you know, their game plan with their, you know, MRIs, CAT scans, ultrasounds, all those things. Um, All the cancer below my chest was no longer there, nor most here. Um, Though my thyroid, it's still gone. And, um, you know, they did uh, work here kind of. So, but getting back to your point, Leslie, I was just like, oh, great. You know, that's kind of <laughs> nice. But, you know, never putting it really together that like something pretty special had happened to me. I just went on, you know, next year, my daughters got married, and had family things <laughs> until COVID hit. When COVID hit, that was really when you know, where we get to sit, we got, I got to sit with myself. So then I just started kind of, you know, playing around and reading books that, you know, someone had given me that were just on the shelf. Uh, and uh, through that, just really started to start hearing and listening. And then they would pose questions to me and I'd be like, Oh, okay. Well, I can try to do that. The same thing with automatic writing. That's how my automatic writing came in. You know, I would listen and, you know, then they said, get a pad and paper, you know, and, and then literally it was just kind of like school, you know, just kind of dictating. Um, I did a course with another woman um, just to kind of get my bearings under me because it was very shaky for a while. And I just really didn't know what I was doing um, to get kind of more trained and, sh- uh, Ashley had her on her program her name is Julie Jancis but she did angel Reiki and when I started doing practicing on people it became very clear that you know they were just 
I could hear very clearly, just speak, just speak. So then I just started speaking. So it really flowed pretty easily. And um, I ask, of course, who they are. They just call themselves. They're just a conscious collective that I am part of that's in a different dimension and that, um, you know, I came here to connect with them so that I could channel through information and share, which is kind of a scary thing at this mm-hmm. point in my life. Mm-hmm. So um, not scary, I should say, just different. I'll, I'll just call it different. It's not scary um, at all. So uh, yeah, so I connect with them every day, basically through my automatic writing and um, and then channel for people privately at this point. But um, happy to uh, be here and uh, channel information for you guys tonight. Yay. Wow. <laughs> what, are we going to just like raise our hand? <laughs> I got a question. I got Sorry, a question. One, one comment. Sorry. Hey, you look about like in your 20s. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Can you just <laughs> you know, yeah. Can you mention I have my grandchildren and I saw you last time when you were talking about before when you were sitting up, you, I don't even know if that's a, like, I don't know what's going on, but your, I don't know if it's your energy or whatever. You literally look like you're in your twenties. Well, wow. I'm going to go to bed and sleep good on that one. You will. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a question, Jessica? Yes, I do have a question for her. So um, one thing I should have mentioned that I forgot to mention is that for whatever reason, starting this, uh, well, I, now we're in February, so January, um, I started having uh, ear ringing in my right ear and it wasn't just, it's not like a continuous thing. It's not what I noticed over time because it's been going on since like the first week of January and it's only my right ear. And it's only at significant times when I'm in conversation, when I'm talking about a deceased person, or I'm talking about something spiritual, uh, whether I'm having conversation with somebody else or having conversations with my husband, or I'm even having conversations with myself in my mind when I'm like doing dishes or something like that. Like I'll have like these, you know, like your mind wanders. So I'm having like these thoughts as I'm doing dishes. And it's like, almost like I'm asking a question to my spirit guides. And it's like, I'll have an ear ring. You know, it's just like, it happened too many times. It happened at the church for the funeral. Like we were um, in conversation with a controversial topic. It was a relative of the deceased person she brought up something controversial and immediately, immediately my right ear started ringing and it's like the thought popped in my head. She's not happy with this conversation. It probably shouldn't be happening. Just little things like that. So it's like, I don't know if I'm developing something. And then like when I'm doing my angel cards, I was asking recently about it and they said it's a clear audience and all is well. Like those are the two cards that came flying out immediately after I wrote, asked that question. So it's like, is it tendinitis and something going on with my ear or is it <laughs> some I'll, spiritual I'll, I'll, awakening yeah. happening? Like, I don't know. I really don't know. One, but one, Yeah. One thing that came through that I'll share with you and I, I, I don't know who it came through for, but how they explained it is like a dog whistle, right? Just because, you know, a dog can hear something we can't, but just because mm-hmm. we can't hear it doesn't mean it does not exist. Mm-hmm. So they were talking about, and sometimes some of the things I talk about, like it's so kind of a big picture, like big picture stuff, you know, that we're all just kind of grasping what the universe kind of is. Like I'm yeah. just, and just like you are, because I'm hearing it for the first time like you, but how they explained it was, is that the veil is kind of thinning so you can hear more frequency. Uh-huh. So the people that are hearing these, this ringing is that you're becoming attuned to a new frequency that is now available. Okay. So it was kind of something like that, but maybe they'll speak to that t- tonight too. You know, yeah. I don't know where the conversation goes, um, uh, but if you want, I know, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but we'll just get into it. And yeah, then- I do. They typically will just introduce themselves. They might have something like kind of general they want to say, but then a lot of times they want to answer people's questions. So if you have specific questions to ask, um, feel free. And I typically close my eyes because I find it easier to focus myself. Um, 
just at this point in time while I'm doing it. So, and then just so you know, sometimes some of the things I say, I'm kind of like, I snap out of it because I want to get feedback, human feedback, you know, and just have a conversation. I go right back in because it doesn't, for me, I can be in and out like easy, easily, I should say. So I say, we just go for it girls. So if they want, if so let's, so you're going to start and then do you want me to like people go like this next? Like, so oh, it's my, not... my eyes will be closed. So you can go ahead and call on whoever I want. Okay. So it, the next, if, once she's done, just go like this and then you can ask the question. How's that? Hand up. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Good evening, all of you ladies. We are excited to be here with you. We want you to know that you are in good and quite capable hands, we will say, with this community that you are now a part of. We are here to say some things to you, but as um, Kate mentioned, we would be happy to answer any general questions you have. We are not fortune tellers, so to speak. We are a council that is here to kind of raise consciousness on this earth plane. That is our mission. And that is what Kate is here to do for us. For with her voice, she will be able to transmit information to help people raise consciousness. So if you um, ask questions such as, what is my daughter going to have for breakfast tomorrow? We will probably not give you that answer, but we will be happy to answer um, more um, important questions about why you are here on this earth incarnated at this specific time. For when you understand your true purpose here on earth, you start to behave or um, act in a manner um, true to your soul essence, we will say. So we are um, quite excited for Kate, we will say, because as um, your leader, Ashley, has mentioned, she is not... Um, very comfortable in this arena yet. So this gets her feet wet, so to speak. So we want to thank you. Thank you all for um, holding audience for her. And hopefully we will bring information through to you that you will find useful, enlightening. And um, as we said, raise your own consciousness for you all are here to do many important things on this earth where it takes many individuals, many souls to um, achieve the greatest that they are here to achieve achieve in order to continue to elevate the consciousness on earth for it is truly a group effort we will say that is necessary for this action to actually uh, take place it is moving quite rapidly now as you all probably um, can feel you all are um, um feelers we will say we do not really like to use the word impact anymore because people we will say wear it as a badge and we do not want that kind of um, label that it is a bad thing so to speak just call yourself a feeler a feeler is one who really feels what direction they want to go how they want to move or sometimes people um, associate um, feelings only in uh, a negative way not that there is anything negative, but you know what we speak of. Feelings can be all kinds of things. So we want you to be big feelers, mm, souls who travel this earth knowing their purpose because they can feel it right away. You speak of this tree, this lady, um, Kate, I believe, who spoke connecting to the tree, uh, the telepathic messages that you can receive. It is the same thing with you all. You have feelers. You have hair on your skin, on your um, head. These are antennas of such that uh, receive uh, information much faster than you uh, can imagine. So these are the antennas to your humanness, your soul that receive all kinds of transmissions from the universe for when you start to feel into these moments in time you will be able to navigate this life much easier than you do than you all currently are able to at this point not that we are saying you are doing anything wrong you are navigating all quite nicely we will say but you will be able to be much more attuned much more adept and much more able to move through life with ease and not be shaken up by anything that is happening around you so we will stop there. We hope that that was um, a decent opening, as they say. And we will um, open the floor to you to answer specific questions that you all may have about certain aspects of this world, your soul, 
or whatever is on your mind this evening. Go ahead, Kate. We can't hear you. Thank you so much. And it's such an honor to be talking um, to you. And you mentioned um, our leader, Ashley, and I just am so grateful that she's come into all of our lives. And I definitely can imagine that she was a queen on some angelic planet, but we'll leave it there. I did want to um, ask when I am connecting to the tree, um, is there anything I can do to say improve what how, my level of connection or how I'm um Am I meant to be asking questions or is there anything I can improve that experience firstly? And secondly, am I on purpose or do you have any extra guidance for my purpose? Yes, we want to say first and foremost, everyone is always on purpose. So it is a human mm, thought that you think that you are not on the right path or there are many ways to get to the same destination. You have had the fortunateness, we will say, of now living in a home where you have this tree, this tree that wants to be of service to you. See, it is um, reciprocated, so to speak. You care for it, it cares for you. You will have this connection with this tree and it will provide you information and guidance so that you are able to live life more easily. This tree has been around many, many mm, millennial, we would say, much longer than you might think. The tree is a symbol, we would say, of strength. This tree is giving you strength. It is giving you vision. It is giving you guidance. Use that to your benefit, we will say. You are on a very um, high path, we would say, a high path in that you are already connected back to source. And that is kind of what we want to say is the goal for all, to be able to connect back to your own consciousness. And it is through these, we will call them intermediaries, that it is able to it, it is able, you are able to achieve it, we will say. You are using this tree as an intermediary, intermediary. <laughs> Gates having struggled with that word, but you know what? <laughs> Uh, middleman, we'll just say middleman, a middleman. This is a middleman for you, but what you want to do is connect back to your soul self. So there will be many times when all of you will experience um, encounters, we will call them, with different uh, spiritual beings. They are guides, they are angels, they are loved ones. Whatever it takes to get your attention and start the um, communication flow going back and forth. But once that... Um, soul that you connected with has served its purpose, they will usher you through a gateway to the next level. So you are just about there. They will be introducing you to others that will be able to give you information so that you will be able to kind of move along your path. Do not be in quite a rush for you are very comfortable sitting under that tree and you're quite loving it, we will say. So enjoy it while you can but there will be other beings that will introduce themselves and just take the guidance. That's what we will say about Kate. She kept taking the guidance. That's what she was doing when she was learning her automatic writing. It was really not quite pleasant, we will say, as with you, Kate, sitting under a tree, feeling all lovely and stuff. It was really mm, a little tenuous for her to say yes, as she says, yes to the dress, so to speak. We argued with her, we will say back and forth, telling her that this is what she came to do, to be a spiritual teacher, to understand that she needed to spread a message out. For her message will be to most like you who are the healers of the future world, to make sure that they stay grounded, to make sure that they stay within earth and connected to spirit at the same time. For it is very easy to lose yourself within the cosmos, so to speak, and forget that you came here to have a human experience as well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. helpful. Really, really helpful for me. Thank Jessica. you. Jessica. Jessica. Um, before this session with the council got started, I asked Kate about the ear ringing. And then, so if you wanted to offer any kind of follow-up with that, um, to that question, but then also regarding um, my path, I always seem to be struggling with my purpose and path and wondering if you can any offer any kind of um, direction with that as well, please. Thank you. Yes. So we will start with the mm, ear ringing. It is happening to many souls on the planet right now. As Kate gave her kind of mm, 
novice, we will say, explanation of how she feels this is uh, being experienced, so to speak. We want to say to you that it is a little bit different than what she explained to you. Yes, the veil is thinning. Yes, there are kind of solar flares, we will say, that are hitting the earth plane that are opening up. We will call them portals, so to speak, so these frequencies can come through. And this is kind of what is causing the rain. There is a very vast number of, we will call them, as we think you all refer to them as solar flares, which permeates the, um, the veil that uh, keeps frequency out, so to speak, that keeps all kind of disconnected from other parts of the universe, so to speak. So it is kind of twofold. You are kind of in your awakening process, we all call. So embrace it. Know that it is not anything bad. Um, say thank you, so to speak. Uh, be in gratitude that this is happening to you, not think that it is happening um, happening for you not that it's happening to you it is not anything bad it is just an adjustment of frequency within your physical body we will say to you that there will be many times where your body will kind of go through things all of you we will use this as a um, group message all of you will go through similar kind of transitions we will say the physical body human body as it stands for most of you at this point really needs to change a little bit in order for this connection to really occur Kate had a very um, substantial adjustment we will just call it that she said yes to it was something that kind of um, we will say scared we will use the word scared Kate her quite a bit for we asked her if she would be willing to go through this kind of physical body adjustment and she did say yes but it was very mm, shaking within her body for she laid and shook for quite a bit of time but the mantra that we gave her at the beginning when we were trying to guide her to open and do this work was you are being led by the hand of God. There is no need to worry. That's what she would always tell herself when something was happening. It wasn't anything that was going to be bad. It was only something that she was unsure of. She is a control freak, so to speak, wanted to grasp everything so tightly, wanted to make sure she knew the outcome before she started down the path. That is not the way it is in the spirit world. You really do have to trust, believe, and know that you are being divinely guided and just say yes and mm, remove those fears and doubts that you have. Those are a human program that makes you not want to kind of, as Kate says, say yes to the dress. But there are some... Mm, things we will say that you can do for yourself, for your own purpose, you're coming back around to that question. You need to feel into your heart. That's what we want to share with all of you. It is important to really feel into the heart for we all, as we have said many times, think much with the head and don't really think with the heart. It is through the heart that you receive information from the universe. It is through the heart that the information is transmitted then. And it is this mind that kind of keeps you limited in your thinking. So we will say to you, if you just feel into your heart, Jessica, feel into your heart to see what it is that mm, you really find joy and love in, follow that. That is your biggest guidance. Don't... Mm, Say yes to things that don't make you happy or feel joy. Say yes to all the things that are going to put a smile on that beautiful face of yours. Once you do that, you will fall into your purpose very easily. Thank you. Karen, go ahead. Uh, hello. Um, thank you. Uh, my question is, is um, I'm channeling. I know I've been channeling for... I guess a long time, but lately I've been channeling myself every day. Um, I think it's my higher self and I'm also channeling light language and I can feel your energy coming through me now. And I just wanted to know what you can tell me. Um, I should not should just more information, please. Light language, we will say is something that is coming in on board we will say coming into awareness it is a new uh healing modality we will say a light language is something that one sees speaks and does and through light language one connects back to their inner voice so to speak so yes you are channeling your inner voice for your own light light language is just that it is the voice of your soul and that is what we will say to that 
you can use it in many different ways. You can be um, a healer of healers, so to speak, for healers will really need a lot of work on themselves and you will be able to provide them with that. And there, um, there will begin to be a army of people that will be speaking the same language, so to speak. And it is through this language that you all will be able to kind of um, interstellarly connect, we will say, with each other. Mm, I don't know if you kind of resonate with that at all, but that is how we want to explain it. It is a way of you to communicate without really having to communicate within the earth plane. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Um, yes, I, I do know what you're talking about. Yes. Kate does not know what she is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Like, she just behind the scenes going, hmm, I wonder if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have a pretty good awareness of who we are. Kate doesn't have as much an awareness of who we are as you do, actually. So it is very... Oh. It is very nice to meet you, so to speak. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> we, are, we are happy to be able to connect with you this way and in the other ways as well. Yes. Thank you. Oh, Ashley, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my question is just if there's any particular guidance for me trying to quiet the monkey mind and what I feel like kind of gets in the way of me you know, trying to meditate and connect to my higher self and be in a state to receive messages. I feel like I get blocked along the way. So yeah. any particular well, information? Yeah. We would be happy to answer that question for you for it is really something that you all can benefit from this answer that we will give you for you do not need to meditate, so to speak. This is something that is a mm, misconception, so to speak. There are many ways for you to be able to connect with your high self without sitting in, in silence, so to speak. You are able to do this at any time of day, and it is only by the human mind thinking that you need to do it a certain way that you block yourself from actually doing it. This girl that you are listening to right now has had many conversations with us about meditation. She argues with us night and day saying, look, if everybody has to meditate for an hour a day, no one's going to wake up because no one has time. This is what she tells us. We understand this. So we wanted her. We want her to spread the message and tell people anybody can do it because if I can do it, you can do it, so to speak, because this girl does not meditate. She takes her time when she uh, writes, so to speak. That is kind of like a meditation. Automatic writing is a meditation. You do not have to sit and kind of mm, quiet the mind. You can quiet the mind at any time just by asking your higher self, quiet my mind. That is all it really takes. You do not, mm, well, we won't really say that, but what we are trying to say to you is that you do not need to be mm, hindered by thinking that you need to do it a particular way. You can do it your own way. That is what we are trying to tell you. When uh, one of you mentioned doing the dishes and be able to receive messages, that is a time when you quiet your mind and you really don't really think of things. When you do um, simple gardening tasks, household chores, those kind of things, you are meditating. So give yourself credit for that. That is the message we want to give you. Give yourself credit because you are meditating more in a day than you possibly can imagine. Just because you're not sitting with your headphones and listening to one of these people that provides these meditations does not mean you are not doing it. So you need to sit there and think of all the times that you are doing these little things that you have to do, we will say, within this construct of society. But you truly are meditating, but you have been programmed to think that you are not doing just that, and you are. All you need to do is kind of start having these conversations with yourself Kate has done this her whole life. She didn't even really realize it. It is quite funny. Her children, when they were her young, would be driving in the car with her and she uses her hand a lot when she talked. So she would take her hands off the steering wheel and her kids would know she was talking to herself in her mind. And they would say, mom, <laughs> stop talking to yourself. But she was having a conversation with her high self. She's always done this. But as she has told you, she didn't realize these things were happening. So you have to see that it is happening for you. You just have not... Mm, come into the awareness of it yet. So we will say we are excited for you because once you go back to your day, 
moving forward, you will be, you will come into this awareness. Now you will see, you actually heard something when you were in the shower, doing dishes, vacuuming, all the things that you all do, you are getting messages. All you have to do is come into awareness of it, receive it and say, ah, thank you so much. Sonia. And thank you so much. This is amazing. Uh, I will ask the question. Um, I think what I'm looking for is confirmation. Why am I here at this time? My purpose, because there's been many times where I get discouraged or there are other seasons in my life come and and um, being a mother, sometimes I hold back and then my own fears as well. Yes, we will say you are not alone. As Kate likes to say, get in line. There are many of you that have these same kind of feelings and we don't want to dismiss them by any manner. We want to say to you, your purpose is being. That is the easiest way to put it. We have said this many times to many people that Kate has channeled for. You are doing your purpose just by being. It is a mm, programmed mm, illusion, so to speak, that you are here for some particular purpose. You are here to have fun, my dear. That is your purpose. Have fun. Enjoy the ride. We keep on telling Kate this. She has... Mm, at the beginning, we will say we provided her information and she felt burdened, like it was a burden to be spiritually connected, that the mm, earth was not going to move forward if she didn't carry out her mission, so to speak. We laughed at her a little bit because that is an ego kind of thing, thinking that it is not going to happen without her, so to speak. And that's what we want to say to you all. Earth will go on and happen regardless whether or not you achieve this or you achieve that. But achievement is just an experience. You are here really to be for that is the purpose of most of you. It's not really you have to do anything just by being, being the light within you, spreading out that vibration. You're actually raising frequency all around you for when you realize that, when you realize I don't have to do anything, I can go to the grocery store and just stand there and spread my light and I'm raising the earth's vibration. You came here to do that, my dear. You all came here to do that and you all are doing a darn fine job of it. Thank you. Anybody else? One more. You know, Erin, can you talk for a second and ask her a little bit more? Because I see you like vibrating over there. And I think she connects with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, um, I feel the energy. So it's just flowing through me. Um, and it's hard to tell anybody what it feels like, but it's amazing. Um, I don't know. Uh, what else would you like to tell us? Yeah. Um, we, um, we will say we are sorry of the last um, person who spoke. We hope we didn't make you feel badly. We we do not want to do that by any stretch of the imagination. We are feeling a little um, closed offness and feel that maybe we didn't. Um, we we will get to you, Aaron, but we mm -hmm. are. We feel remorse. We want to give you the opportunity to ask another question, a follow-up question. So we want all to uh, leave uplifted, so to speak. We do not want one to feel. We know that it is sometimes mm, more difficult in certain mm, chapters of your life, we will say, when you feel like you are giving more of yourself than you giving more of yourself than you can give to yourself. We will say that that is the mm, chapter we will call it in your life right now that you are in, but know that nothing lasts forever. Know that you will move through this point in time. For we will use Kate as an example for to speak. This woman really gave of herself to her whole family. She never really thought about herself. It gave her joy to take care of her family. But what we said to her that the time is now, the time is now for you to do for you, for you to be of service what you came here to do for when you look at your life knowing that your chapters will unfold in the manner that is that serves your highest purpose so to speak so do not get down on yourself do not get frustrated do not think you are not doing enough you are doing just the right amount for there are times in your life where others do need you and you are of service to them so to speak you are the steward of these young souls and it is important all of you who have young children it is a very mm, uh, 
we will say a uh, high responsibility, we will say for these young children who are coming into this life are really vibrating quite high. So it is very important for you to keep them grounded, to keep them safe, to keep them open, so to speak. We will say that is your most important role right now, keeping these souls open, open, open. Do not let anybody shut them down from their light for they came here lit up, so to speak. And you do not want any... Mm, society or constructs of society to dim their lights. So no, right now, that is your purpose. We hope that that is uh, more helpful to you at this time. Is that helpful, Sonia? Yeah, I mean, I actually like what she said initially, so I didn't feel any um, remark. The, the being, it just felt good just to be. Um, so thank you, and and yeah, um, the the struggle is with um my younger one yeah so knowing that um i get to work on helping her um stay open yes yes thank you we appreciate the opportunity to circle back around with you and um again we want you to feel our love feel our light and be uplifted by the messages that you receive so thank you for being so receptive to the information that was provided to you Thank you. I'm, I'm all of a sudden I'm feeling really warm. Yes. So mm, back to light language, so to speak. <laughs> like, can I just tell you, um, as you're talking, like my mouth is vibrating and, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> like everything's just vibrating. Yes. So we will say that it is different for, mm, it happens differently for different souls for different reasons. So Kate is one of these people that we said it does not benefit from feeling too much. The frequency that travels through her is quite high. So it is important for her to have integrated in advance to be able to receive frequency. You are still under kind of the integrate integrative process, we will say. It will mm, wane in time, but it is important for you to feel it at this point so that you know you are feeling something. You are feeling something different and it is grabbing your attention, correct? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it came on probably in November. So yes, it is grabbing my attention. Um, but I, like, I feel like I'm, I'm channeling not only light language, I don't know if that's correct. No, I know it's correct. <laughs> um, like I had a big, huge download last week and uh, um, I'm actually seeing Mandela effects and uh, timeline switches uh, right before my eyes. And uh, is this true? Well, we will say there are some on this earth that mm, experience that mm, quite frequently as well. We know it can be a little unsettling, so to speak, for you are living in this mm, reality, so to speak, then all of a sudden your reality is no longer your reality. So this is why we want to connect you all. We want to connect you all so that there is a support system, a support system that makes one feel that they can have these experiences without thinking they are going off the deep end, so to speak. For there are people within this group, with this in within this community, so to speak, that can hold you. For community is going to be super important because there will be many more like you that will be having these same experiences. And it is not helpful for one to express their experience they are having and be shut down to make them think they are making it up, so to speak. You're not making it up, my dear. You are experiencing exactly what you need to experience to be able to get yourself to this place where you can be the healer that you actually came here to be. So we will say that it is um, a process, a process for you to have to go through. Um, it really is kind of a Hmm. Kate is struggling because of course she is going back to her thing and she's like oh I hope it doesn't get like that for her kind of thing but we <laughs> always think it is a little bit unsettling and we understand that the human sometimes has a hard time grappling with it and you mm, kind of want to stay in it longer than you should at this point we will say it is important for you to go in and out in and out in and out be able to ground back to this earth and not think that this is where you want to be all the time because that is not going to serve you in the long run you will kind of burn out we will say and it is important for you to 
know this now. We will share that with you, that it is important for you to stay grounded to this earth, to understand that you are living within this construct, even though you're able to connect back and kind of all these new fancy things are happening around you, which can be kind of exciting, right? And fun. It's new. It's like a new... Mm, Disneyland, so to speak, that you get to play in now. So have fun with it, yes, but make sure that you still um, know that you are here to live in the human as well, okay? Yes, I got that. Um, yes, I just wanted to, it's nice to talk to somebody. <laughs> but yes, I, I do know that I came here for the human experience. <laughs> yeah, she will say to you that you will be one of these people that will be able to talk to others about this. For you are on the front line, my dear. You are on the front line opening up the doorway, so to speak. For Kate is one of these souls as well. Takes the machete and cuts it down so that the souls that come in behind her can move up and through much more easily. So you are a strong soul, we will say here with us, <laughs> and you are there to do big things. So know that you are... Um, this type of soul who came to earth to do just that. So mm, relax a little bit, we will say, don't get too caught up in all of it. Let it happen as it comes. Don't try to force it, so to speak, because you know that we know the best path forward for you and the timeline. Yes, thank you so much. I'm gonna ask my last question unless anyone else wants to. Um, so when you talk about our soul path and I, you listen to Aaron and I hear you and I, we have mutual friends that are going through these awakenings and I'm wanting that to happen. And I'm trying, you know, like do my automatic writing and I really, you know, do my meditation and all the things. And I look at Aaron and I look at you and I, you know, I have the ear ringings and all that, but we tell me like, what, what is coming for me or oh am my I? Oh, we will stop you right there. My goodness, my dear, do you not see the magnificence that you are? Do you not see this group of people that surround you? Do you not see your tribe? You are doing it, my dear. You are doing it. You are doing it. You are doing it. We understand that there is this, we will say misconception or the illusion, so to speak, that all want to speak, all want to mm, see all want to do all want to have different experiences and yes they will happen in time for you but no you are doing so much so much and there is nothing nothing that we can say to you that will make us like not even I, we just want to bow down to you my dear bow down we will say you need to look at yourself in this magnificence please 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 look at yourself as this magnificent being look how far you have come in so many in, in just a few short years would you have ever imagine this is where your life would have taken you my goodness my dear my goodness my goodness my goodness we are just laughing up here almost hysterically so to speak or to think that you are less than because my dear you are certainly not that mm, thank you wow that was so sweet thank you so much thank you Anybody actually else? I have to say when you asked that question it was like literally the queen of an entire empire going oh is there anything like that I need to do <laughs> Oh, thank you. We will say that most, mm, most of you will say, kind of look at yourself in that way. Everybody feels that they are lacking something, that they want more experiences, that they want more of something that somebody else has. But we want to mm, leave you with this. You are all perfection. You are all in made in the light of God. And there is nothing that is not perfect about that. So regardless, the gifts that come through for you this lifetime or in lifetimes to come, know that what you are doing right now is pure perfection. Look at yourself like that, embody that, move through life like that, and your life around you will become just the most amazing thing that you never even thought possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. And we are back. We're back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, okay. That was amazing. Thank you, Thank you <laughs> so much. Does Thank that put, you. Are you that like drained? No. Uh -uh. Oh, oh, good. No. Like they said, it was like, you know, kind of a big attunement for me. And I'm sure Aaron, same thing going on for you. Just a con, it's a, yeah, like they said, you know, and Jessica, you know, with the ringing, you know, it's like, 
I think I wrote something the other day that they were saying, you know, we don't realize that we're getting attuned when we are, you know, um, it's happening unconsciously. I think I wrote that yesterday. Um, you know, they're unconsciously, unconsciously for us, when we know this is where, why we came, you know, our guides are tweaking with our frequencies so that we're able to receive messages on, our, you know, on our own, which is, you know, like my big miss mission is that, uh, especially with the automatic writing, when I started doing that, it was like, well, this isn't really that hard. Like anybody can do this, right? Like everybody should wake up in the morning and get their own guidance, right? Like that's a good way to start the day. So, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I think it's important to, you know, you hear these spiritual teachers, you listen to what they have to say, but, um, you know, when you really start going in, oh, I heard this really great um, metaphor. Did you, anybody listen to Ann Tucker? Cause you had Ann, did you have Ann Tucker on? You had yeah. Ann Tucker. Uh -huh. So I listened to this thing that she had on um, the other day. I guess I listened to it yesterday and she explained it like that when we're all one part of the universe as a soul, it's like you have this glove on. And so everything's accessible to you, right? You have this glove on, you're in the universe, you're reaching out, you have, you get all these things, you know, they come easily, you can manifest just, you know, but when you incarnate here to earth, like to incarnate in earth, it's like pulling this glove off. And then you only have this little connection. And so as souls, we keep on thinking, oh, it's right here. It's right here. So we keep on reaching outside ourselves to get all this satisfaction, but where at this point on earth, you go in because this is your connection. You go in and you find it all. Yeah. So it was really interesting. I'm like, wow, that's a good one. That is good. Yeah. Like that. So. Yeah. Hi, Yana. Hi. I, mi I missed it. I was in an appointment, but thank you. I actually, I listened to everything. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate your sharing. Oh. It was really insightful. I know. Thank you. It's funny because every time, you know, it's like anything, anytime you sit down with anything, you're like, well, any, any, anything going to come through? I wonder what it's going to happen. <laughs> you know? Like you always have that little, like, um, uh, kind of that little doubt that hangs out like with you, but it's kind of, you know, fun. And Aaron, Aaron and I has, has a friend who reads chakras. We think she's so talented. And every time she hesitates, she's like, I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to see anything. And every time it's so I, great. I know. I know. I don't, I don't know why we, we think that way, but that's just, you know, what it is. It, it, it just bring you back around to realize that it's all going to, you know, all play out exactly how it's supposed to. And really just how unique. They've always explained to me just how unique and special everyone is like even when you do your own little modality you're going to do it in a way that only you can do it which is so amazing you know so you don't have to be like we just have to get it out of our mind that we're trying to be like anybody because we only came here to be us you know you know we came here to be the best us so right. yeah you know Kate just because I know you and you know, where a few years ago or less than few, you know, like to look at your old self and where you are now, like we, I just, let's, can we end on that? Because I really, I think people, it'll help people understand because now they've experienced you and what, what it took, like what I know we, you kind of explained your path of what you got here, but kind of explain like, um, what you see, what, how you see the world now, how you, how you live your life and how you, um, you know, you, I mean, the one example that I is so funny is that when we had our retreat, the address to the place was one, 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 one. Right. And Ooh. so she's like, I've been going to this place for how many years? I've never, that's never even caught my attention. And of course, you know, me and my numbers, it's like, everything is one, 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 two, two, we were on here. Five, five, five. Yeah. It must've been going to that place for seven years before I'm like, Oh, wow. Well, like that address. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Like I didn't really like it didn't make sense to me until 2020, right? Like, and I'd been going there for, you know, whatever, seven years before, you know. And it, it's just so interesting 
And I really attribute that place to really saving my life, right? Because I was just a person that hated doctors. I don't like doctors, didn't want to go to the doctor. And there were some really strong ass women there at that rowing club that, that were nurses that, you know, could see the lump on my neck that I knew was there that I ignored. And they just said, hey, get your ass to the doctor, okay? Like, right? And if it weren't for them, who knows, right? What I would have been doing. So I end up at this magical place that I would never have gone to for, you know, my friend who wanted to learn to row, so to speak. And, you know, I was just humoring her. But yeah, all these little things that happen that I always, when I talk to people, I say, you know, I can look at my life in a rear view mirror and you look at all these things and you're like, wow, I'm get, I get it now. I, you know, yeah. So it's an interesting perspective. I'm actually kind of not, not thankful, but it's kind of fun to be able to have had this awakening now. And then you can use your library of life experiences of things that you never paid attention to that now all of a sudden makes sense to you. <laughs> right. Totally. Yeah. People, Yana was asking if she could get your information. Um, oh, sure. Can how do you want me to send it to people, or do you want? Can you put uh, it in the? Want to yeah. just tell everyone and they can write it down? Yeah, I'll, I'll just put my email. Okay, in the chat. So if anyone wants to um, connect with Kate, um, you are all. She will put it in the chat. There you go. Um, so if if we're not meditating, how do you suggest like connecting better to our higher selves? If and you're listen not, to our yeah. inner selves, like if, so, if it's not meditation. Yeah. You're connecting with your, I would say, like from now again, looking at my life from a rear view mirror, like in a, even told Ashley, even with the retreat thing, it's just like I didn't really understand that when I took showers all the time, that I was connecting with my high self and I would get all this information, but I didn't understand what it was at the time because I just thought, oh, that's a great idea. And then I would act on it, right? I would take action on something that just came in my head when I was in the shower, right? So it's really you having the awareness that you're, that they're tr you're getting the information all the time. And then it's you being able to just tune into that and, uh, you know, take, take action on, I've done business things. I've done, you know, gave advice for my kids. I, you know, I got a message from a friend one time. She was taking a test that she had failed twice. And I said, I think you should do this before you go in. And, you know, they just said, say these few words and like take the test and, 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 and she passed. Right. But I didn't know why I was doing it. Right. It was just like, you're just kind of moved to do it. So, um, I think it's different for everybody. And I'm not saying like, I know they said, you know, you don't have to meditate, but I think for someone like me, I would beat myself up thinking that I'm not a spiritual person same, that same. I don't meditate, right? Same, so yeah, person, yeah. They showed me that I'm doing myself, that my self, self love, right? That, you know, everybody's gonna get there a hundred different ways. And it's your belief that you think you're not going to get there if you don't meditate. So I think it was them trying to bring to your awareness that you can get there so many different ways and that you don't have to necessarily tell yourself, I need to meditate for three days or I'm not going to be spiritually connected kind of thing. You know, I mean, using me as an example, as someone that, you know, has a hard time sitting still because I'm pretty ADD. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, anybody else before we go that was so fun the kate thank you so much i just loved it wow oh yeah you. passive meditation versus active meditation yeah there you and go water holds memory and is an amplifier yeah. we want to go on that aaron i'm sorry what when you said i know water I know water. Well, that's why, fire. yeah, that's why um, when you are in the shower and oh, okay. things come to you, it's an amplifier mm -hmm. and uh, it holds memory. So um, that's why we're mostly water. We hold memories right. of in our DNA and everything like that. So that's a, and then the passive versus um, active uh, doing passive, passive meditation is um, walking doing dishes, thing, you know, coloring, things like that. So you really are doing meditation when you do that. It's just that the active is sitting down and trying to clear your mind, which they're now saying is 
you don't even have to do like like Kate said you don't even have to do you because yeah. you're just you're passively meditating all day long yeah and I do have to say like looking back on things they were kind of showing me when I was kind of going through my awakening it was mostly me just believing I was worthy right it's really believing that you're worthy um you know we, I, I mean I'm sure you guys are all haven't done anything wrong in your lives, but I've done a few things that probably, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be putting out there on the internet. <laughs> and, and I mean, they really just walked me through like that. Hey, you know, that was just an experience you had to have, but it's not who you are, you know? So um, really a lot of it is just loving up on yourself so much that, you know, it just it'll just it'll just come it just comes you know when you and really spending time doing what you love I think especially as you become a mother like you you're putting everybody else first so much that you forget that um literally allowing yourself to have fun and do what you love that definitely helped me a lot to like actually go oh I'm allowed to spend some time doing what I love and you're like oh my god is this it's like it seems groundbreaking but then when you actually, it makes sense, like, because you're so happy doing what you love, you're embodying love. And that's, it's just another opening because you're like, oh my God, I'm allowed to do this. Like, whereas when we're young, when we're children, we just la like literally naturally do what we love. That's just our, how we operate. And then as we become older, we get kind of conditioned to, you know, you should be working, you should be cleaning, you should be cooking, you should be taking care of the children, you should be doing all these things. And then when you literally give yourself permission to go, you're allowed to spend time doing what you love, whatever that is, everybody's different. Oh, that to me was like, it was like groundbreaking, but <laughs> it seems so obvious. <laughs> like yeah. it's like, oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, anyway, thank you. That was fun. Thank you so much, everyone. Are you kidding? Thank you. Thank you, amazing. Kate. <laughs> And Thank I know so like much. for you to do that, Kate, was a lot. And I like watching, you know, watching it and sitting here knowing that it's, you know, it's taking you out of your comfort zone. How do, how do you feel now? Is it like cracking the egg a little bit more? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, um, it kind of gets you to the point where like what you think is not really reality, right? <laughs> Like mm -hmm. you tell yourself all these stories, um, but this is a pretty safe space. I have to say. <laughs> right. But still, I mean, you did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, this was like, yeah. One of your first, like. Um, no, this is definitely the most people I've channeled for. Yeah. I think I've done four people at one time, but not like, yeah. Yeah. Will you go back and watch this on my YouTube channel? I will. You will? Oh, no, I don't really watch myself. Um, I send people recordings, but um, I, I typically don't watch them back because I figure they're for them, right? Right. But you yeah. will watch this? Yeah, I think I'll watch it. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, everybody. So nice to meet you, Leslie. For the first Oh, time. nice to be here. Thank you. Oh, I loved it. What was your takeaway from today? Um, well, it's nice to listen to other people and to sort of be in that shared community. Mm -hmm. and just to hear other people's stories and experiences I love that and yeah I think it'll get me thinking more about you know asking the questions and being more open to when things happen I feel like I've had things happen to me but because of doubt or fear I said no I didn't step through the door I was actually a door was made available to me years ago, but I didn't understand it enough. And it was way too scary. And I've had a few things like that happen to me. So yeah, this is really uplifting. And yeah, and, and I feel like I'm ready. Like, now I want the door and I can't find the darn thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. oh, the door is there. Trust me. It is. I know. <laughs> no, but, oh, it's been great. You, Thank you. So we'll see you next month. It's funny because I was really looking for like I think it's because I it's just the same probably as you guys. Like I look forward to this connection and you know, me and my connection. But um I'm like, gosh, I don't know if one Monday is enough. Like it makes me you know, it's that I really look forward to that. 
So thank you all for taking the time tonight. And Kate, gosh, couldn't thank you enough. I'm so grateful. And thank you for everything. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. you. You know how I feel about you and kind of like how you've kind of made me believe in myself, I guess, a little bit more than I probably would have a little bit faster. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I love you all. It was so good, Kate. And it's just the beginning. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it is just the beginning. <laughs> thank yeah. you, Ashley. Oh, thank, thank you so me. much. Thank you all. Mm. Thank you, lady. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks.